Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Beth Jones. And I'm Peter Dubois. First tonight, Burson Power has proposed a new partnership with law enforcement to help crack down on illegal marijuana growing operations. The company wants to report its customers' electricity usage information to police if it's deemed to be suspiciously excessive. That proposal was the topic of a hearing at the Maine Public Utilities Commission today, and our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard was there. He brings us the details. A person would like to report customers as suspects based on certain characteristics, including high usage, of being illegal marijuana growers. The Maine Public Utilities Commission decided against allowing utility companies to report customers to law enforcement who they suspected to be engaged in illegal activities such as illegal marijuana grow operations based on increased power usage. We had some situations in northern and eastern Maine where people were doing illegal marijuana grows that were definitely not safe. And that meant that they were using residential homes with wiring that isn't sufficient for that kind of high volume of electricity use. Uh, this was causing threat of fires and even in some cases some actual home fires, endangering first responders, endangering the very people that were working and living in those homes, and also endangering Versant Power staff. Uh, we had a number of occasions where we actually went to check a meter at one of these residences, and it was in excess of 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Philip Bartlett, the chair of the Maine Public Utilities Commission, says this doesn't stop utilities from complying with lawful subpoenas or reporting if they witness a crime while doing their job. Uh, our concern was that the approach was really casting a net much too wide and that there could be legitimate uses that cause you know, similar load patterns, certain usage patterns, uh, that would result in them being reported to authorities and being investigated. Uh, I think it's just simply not the role of the utilities to be stepping in, trying to sort of survey customers and figure out who might be violating the law and make those reports. Versant says while they're disappointed with the decision, they understand why it was made. We recognize and understand that there's a balancing act there between making sure people stay safe and making sure customers' privacy is rightly protected. Um, and that's why we will continue to work with stakeholders in a lawful way and continue to explore ways that we can keep the public safe while ensuring customers have freedom and privacy. In Hollowell, I'm Corey Bouchard for APC7 and Fox 22 News. Searsport's town government received a long-awaited update on a highly controversial offshore wind project. But that update shows just how slowly the process is moving and that opposition still remains. Our Kelly Warren has the story. It's important that the state give this town an update since we are basically the uh, center of attention for offshore wind. The Searsport Offshore Wind Project, which has been directed by the Maine DOT and the Mills Administration, is still in preliminary stages. And a meeting held Tuesday night to update the Searsport town government and area residents highlighted the contentious nature of the project. There's many layers to the controversy. Ultimately, for us, it's about jobs and it's about trying to find a way to reduce the tax burden for the people of Searsport. The DOT says the port will create 1,300 construction jobs and 350 operating jobs. Matthew Burns, the director of the Maine Port Authority, announced the DOT's plans to apply for permitting for the project this year, and they are continuing to work on grant funding. The site that the Mills administration favors is Sears Island, but some residents and nearby organizations are urging the already industrialized Mac Point to be considered instead. A report detailing pros and cons of Sears Island and other sites for the project is expected to be finished and submitted in September. They've been promising that since before the June bill legislation and we still haven't seen it and it makes it hard for anybody to make an informed decision. I think that that all is dependent on uh, the process that, that we're currently, um, you know, really just uh, to obtain, you know, federal and state permits to comply with the NEPA process and find the least environmentally damaging practicable alternative. Burns says more public meetings may be planned in the future to keep everyone informed. In Searsport, Callie Warren, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. In other news tonight, three people are facing drug charges after police search a re searched a residence in Belfast. On Monday, members of the Belfast Police Department and the Waldo County Sheriff's Office went to 64 Swan Lake Avenue as part of a year-long investigation into drug trafficking. 
Belfast Police Chief Robert Cormier says they found what is believed to be methamphetamine, fentanyl, scales, several cell phones, and other items connected to illegal drug sales. Cormier says they also recovered stolen handguns and other weapons. 38-year-old Alexander Wilson and 25-year-old Brittany Saucier of Belfast were arrested on a variety of charges, including aggravated trafficking, receiving stolen property, illegal possession of firearms, and cruelty to animals. 38-year-old Sidney Harris of Rockland was arrested for possession of scheduled drugs. That investigation is ongoing, and police ask anyone with information about the case to contact the Belfast Police Department. That number is 338-2040. A challenge to Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s ballot access in Maine has been withdrawn. According to the Secretary of State's office, the person who challenged RFK Jr.'s validity to be on the Maine ballot withdrew that petition by a letter sent to Secretary of State Shanna Bellows. A hearing was previously scheduled for Wednesday at 9 a.m. Secretary Bellows says that hearing has been canceled. An additional hearing is still scheduled for Wednesday at 1 p.m. to address ballot challenges brought against the other third-party candidate for President Cornell West. Heading back to Searsport now, Tozier's Family Market in Searsport closed last month, but now there's a possibility of a new grocery store opening in its place. Our Callie Warren has more on the future of the property. There's a big hole in, in, in our community because it's gone. The town of Searsport has been without a grocery store for weeks. I'd kind of like another grocery store so that it'd be closer. I could, I could walk from my house to there. But their town manager says that could change as a potential buyer has narrowed in on the building and all indications are they want to establish a new grocery store. Details of the buying process aren't being disclosed at this time, but town manager James Gilway says he believes a sale could bring a positive change to the town. Well, I, I don't have a lot of information. Um, I have uh, spoken to a, a person, a potential new owner, uh, who was, but I don't have any information I can disclose about it. For community members, it's a glimmer of hope in a bleak situation. You have to go out of town in order Hannaford, to get anything. Hannaford's reasonable, but the, you go in there and buy a bag, it's like $150. A bag of food in well, Hannaford's is expensive. I would like to see a little, little store that doesn't give bad prices and Hope and pray they make it. Gilway says more information is expected to be available in the coming days. In Searsport, Callie Warren, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. In other news, all of the new public restrooms recently installed across Bangor will now need to be replaced. After a review from the City of Bangor's engineering department, it was found that the restrooms were not compliant with the Americans with Dis Disabilities Act. According to Bangor City Manager Debbie Laurie, the stalls will need to be removed and sent back to the company that made them so they can be retrofitted and brought up to code. We do have two units that have yet to be delivered, so we'll ensure those units are in compliance with ADA. We will deliver those to sites that currently have units, be able to remove those, retrofit them, and get them back. There is no set timeline for when the current bathrooms will be swapped out with ADA-compliant ones. Well, members of the MDI Biological Laboratory were accompanied by Senator Susan Collins today to formally announce a nearly $20 million federal award to a science-based collaborative network of Maine institutions. Our Doug Banks explains. Any sort of science is coming from a community. The Maine Idea Network of Biomedical Research Excellence, also known as Maine INBRI, is a collaborative network of state educational and research institutions. At the helm of Maine INBRI, is the MDI Biological Laboratory, an independent nonprofit biomedical research institution. This gives those students training opportunities at other institutions across the collaborating colleges. On Tuesday, members of the institution were accompanied by Senator Susan Collins to formally announce a $19.4 million federal award to Maine INBRI. The award was made possible through the National Institute of General Medical Sciences and renews the network's funding for five years. Tuesday also formally marked the collaborative network's growth from 14 to 17 institutions. The INBRI has allowed us to hire researchers from all over the country and to be honest, all over the world. Senator Collins spoke to those on the institution's Bar Harbor campus about the aspirations of keeping young people in Maine as they begin their careers. There are nearly 500 
life science companies in our state. Together, these companies have created nearly 10,000 main jobs. They should have some national or international experience and then to come back. And the better we are, the more likely they can come back. The MDI Biolab in Maine Inbury is looking towards the future of not only science, but of their people. In fact, Sam, I'm counting on you <laughs> to make further developments in CRISPR technology. Coming here, every single person that you talk to loves the life sciences. They've made it their life. In Bar Harbor, Doug Banks, ABC7, and Fox 22 News. And looking outdoors today, a really enjoyable day to spend time outdoors if you have the chance. Right. I spent about three hours at the dentist, so I, I, I missed <laughs> yeah. most of the afternoon and then spent the rest of the afternoon unable to feel the left side of my face, which was highly enjoyable. Right. Very glad to be back here this evening on what is a very cool and calm evening. Exactly. That it is. And we're glad to have you here back on the desk uh, and able to feel your face tonight. It's always a plus. And while yeah. everyone envisions what that must have looked like, let's get a first check of our forecast. <laughs> Thank you, Beth and Peter. Let's take a look at that radar right now. We got a few isolated thunderstorms that are traveling north to south right now, uh, but they are not too big at all. They're not going to be dropping too much rain either. So we are going to be in the clear going into tonight because these isolated storms should diminish before we get into those overnight hours. So let's take a look at those rain chances, though, for the upcoming hours and going into tomorrow. We can see during the evening uh, going into Wednesday, that is when rain is going to be very likely. And then as we go into Thursday, those chances will become lower, but we still will have some more areas where we could see some more rain. Look at those high temperatures for today. Bangor at 82 degrees and many areas to the southwestern portion as well. We're in those low 80s. We saw the mid 70s over by Greenville and taking a look into tonight. We'll have those clear skies and those temperatures going to hove right around the low 60s. And a calm, cool overnight. Can't beat it. Mm -hmm, we'll take it. All right. Still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, Maine lawmakers are trying to improve upon the Capitol complex in hopes of making it more secure. We will have that story and more just after this. Act now to get an offer you'll love and drive into summer with a Honda CRV and Accord. Buy online, reserve from select dealers, or hurry into the Honda Summer Event. AMHG Works LLC, American Made Home Goods, located at the Rennie's Plaza in Bangor. Come check us out. We're open seven days a week featuring artisans, crafters, and manufacturers from across the United States, where everything is meticulously designed with care and pride. We also have a wide selection of pet accessories and treats. Let us be your new favorite store. We look forward to seeing you. At Toyota's national sales event, we've got a long lineup of vehicles for summer fun. Like Camry, RAV4, Highlander, BZ4X, Tundra, Corolla Hybrid, Tacoma, Sienna, Corolla Hatchback, Sequoia, Prius Prime, RAV4 Hybrid, Land Cruiser, GR Supra, Toyota Crown, 4 You could get $1,000 in financing cash toward a luxurious and spacious Highlander. Plus, get two years no-cost maintenance. All from the longest-lasting brand, Toyota. Come in today. Toyota, let's go places. We've got an all-new game with a new way to play. It's Cash Pop from the Main Lottery. You just pick one number from 1 to 15. If your number's drawn, you win. Just like that, with cash prizes up to $2,500 and five drawings every day. You gotta make it pop with Cash Pop. What kind of a sick world do you live in? A birthday challenge that's no cakewalk. It's a little bit reckless. MasterChef Generations. Two all-new hours Wednesday on Fox. Act now to get an offer you'll love on the rugged Honda Ridgeline, Passport, and Pilot. Buy online, reserve from select dealers, or hurry in to the Honda Summer Event. Hello, I'm Emma Smith, and coming up on Good Morning Maine, we'll hear about a group meeting regarding women working in the construction field and what advocacy was going on there. Plus, local hospitals are reporting some issues with staffing and finances. We'll hear all about these issues, plus that full forecast, coming up on Good Morning Maine.
Maine lawmakers are supporting an effort to make the Capitol complex more secure, an issue that's been talked about for years. One plan did pass last session, but failed to get the funding it needed. As Mal Meyer reports, this latest version is a multi-million dollar project. There's a number of things that we do really well here. Capitol Police Chief Matthew Clancy says new security plans are being guided by a 2021 study and an assessment from the Department of Homeland Security. These folks have, have turned everything upside down. We're looking at everything. Uh, so it's not just these, these physical. Well, there's been concerns about not having the same type of protections in both buildings. If you enter the main state house, you'll have to pass through a security checkpoint like this one but walk on over to the cross building and there's nothing like that around. And so that's why I'm, I feel you know, pretty strongly that uh, we have to finally get this done. During a meeting last week, top Republican and Democratic lawmakers heard about the $7 million project to enhance security. The funding comes from a bond already authorized by the legislature. Yeah, this side definitely has a shorter queuing space. A checkpoint will be added to the south side of the cross building and leaders approved moving this one inside the state house into a former cafe. People could use a secure tunnel to move between the buildings. I don't disagree with improving security there. I think that's a, a worthy thing. But Representative Billy Bob Fockingham believes for the cost, they could increase officer wages and hire more. I'd feel a lot safer to have more police officers walking through the building and while things are going on than just to cross through one point and that be it. But Senate President Troy Jackson says many police departments are struggling to hire or are closing. And this is the next best way uh, to make sure that we have uh, great security and that's by giving the technology to the law enforcement officers that we do have. And Chief Clancy says they're already working on some reorganization. Folks will notice um, more of a uniform presence in the Capitol for this upcoming session. Part of the cross building project still needs further approval. Well, the Eastern Area Agency on Aging provides meals to hundreds of homebound older adults in Eastern Maine, but their wait list is growing as they face major funding deficits. Meals on Wheels is a national nutritional program that aims to address senior hunger and isolation. The agency in Brewer is able to provide meals to 600 people monthly, which is a decrease from the 1,200 they were serving during the pandemic. Officials say funding from the American Rescue Plan Act was covering the increased demand, but that funding stopped at the beginning of this year, and now they have a growing wait list of 200 people and a funding gap of 400 to 500 thousand dollars. It's a very vital program and uh, we do make sure that those who are in the most need receive the program first. Um, but it's it's so vital and it, this program will not disappear. Uh, the funding really will just determine how many people we're able to help. Street says they try to take people off the wait list monthly, but are finding that many have been waiting anywhere between four to eight months. The agency is continuing to seek more state funding and have held fundraising events, but they still have a long way to go before they can fill the gap. To learn how you can donate or volunteer, you can visit EAAA.org. Maine is restarting its interlibrary loan program. It was stopped in June because of a contract dispute with the van service that delivers books and other items to 180 libraries that participate in the program across the state. A contract has now been awarded to a different company. That's welcome news to some librarians who say it happened in the summer when they typically have more people coming in. Yeah, it's going to save us, save us some money in postage and it's going to help with the waiting times as well uh, and just give people more access to more items, which is the whole point. So uh, I'm really glad that that's going to get started again. Materials that have been stranded at libraries since the disruption began will be collected starting on August 26th. They will be taken back to the library they came from before the delivery of newly loaned items begins. Meanwhile, new funding to help rebuild Maine's working coastline and make it more resistant to powerful storms. Well, it's about preparing for the future. And Brad Rogers looks at two new sources of funding, one to rebuild storm ravaged wharfs, the other to help make them more resilient. Record storms in January dealt a major blow to the majority of Maine's working waterfront, washing away or damaging wharves up and down the coast. That was two storms back to back, and either one of those storms would have been a catastrophe on its own. 
Uh, and I think that we should be planning for a future where those things happen much more often. Ben Martins, head of the Maine Coast Fishermen's Association, says in the past they would fundraise for specific projects, as they did with grants it recently awarded to owners of small wharves like this one. We had one application where they were like, our entire bank where we store our traps and it all washed away. But on Friday, they raised more than $200,000 for a new fund to allow them to respond to a crisis at a moment's notice. We're starting the Go Fish Fund that would be a flexible, problem-solving fund to respond so that we can go and act and do and strike while the iron is hot. That is what we are really excited about doing. And it, and it came out of this crisis, but we're hoping that it will be able to continue to drive good as well as response. This wharf in Harpswell survived the January storms. Dock workers believe the wooden wharf it replaced wouldn't have made it. These pylons held up remarkably well. The state of Maine was just awarded more than $70 million in federal climate resiliency funds to help wharf owners rebuild from the January storms. Part of the money from the Go Fish Fund will be used to bring in experts to better design wharves to withstand future storms. I think that's actually a really good idea. I mean, the weight alone of the concrete really actually helped keep everything right into place. We are at a tipping point. Disruption is coming and we can be ready for it. It's absolutely critical. I mean, without these docks, I'm not quite sure how a lot of these guys would be able to do what they do. And that was Brad Rogers reporting. Indeed. And coming up on the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22, new information indicates Iran could launch its planned attack on Israel in the next 24 hours. And Ukraine is continuing its campaign into Russia as the su surprise offensive enters its second week. We'll have those stories and more as the 10 p.m. news on Fox 22 continues. Hotels and welfare for illegal immigrants on our dime. Washington liberal policies opened our border and ended Remain in Mexico. And Congressman Jared Golden stood by, blocking common sense solutions. Worse, Golden voted to give amnesty to millions, yet opposed more border patrol resources. Now our communities are flooded with illegal immigrants and Mainers are paying the price. Tell Congressman Golden, illegal immigration is costing our communities too much. Reinstate Remain in Mexico. There are plenty of good reasons to have a dock at your camper lakefront home and to choose a Shoremaster premium dock system or floating poly dock system from Hammond Lumber Company. Lightweight and durable Shoremaster high grade aluminum docks are easy to install and maintain and poly docks are perfect for dealing with deeper fluctuating water levels. Both offer a wide range of available configurations. There's a Shoremaster or poly dock system that's right for you and you'll find it at Hammond Lumber Company. Ready to choose your adventure? At Harvey RV and Marine in Glenburn, they've got the perfect pairing for adventure seekers of all kinds. Explore the open road with their top of the line RVs, travel in comfort and style, whether it's a weekend trip or a cross country journey with the family, or make a splash with their incredible selection of boats. Experience the thrill of the water from fishing trips to exhilarating water sports. At Harvey RV and Marine, you get to choose your adventure or pick both. Harvey RV and Marine, Glenburn. Mainers are tough as nails, and when it comes to quitting smoking or vaping, we don't give up because Mainers know every quit attempt is a step in the right direction. The Maine Quit Link offers free help to stop smoking and vaping, including personalized quit plans and free nicotine gum, patches, and lozenges. Because quitting tobacco with a little extra help is more successful than quitting cold turkey. Quit like a Mainer. Enroll online at MainQuitLink.com or call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. At Toyota's National Sales Event, we've got a long lineup of vehicles for summer fun. Like Camry, RAV4, Highlander, BZ4X, Tundra, Corolla Hybrid, Tacoma, Sienna, Corolla Hatchback, Sequoia, Prius Prime, RAV4 Hybrid, Land Cruiser, GR Supra, Toyota Crown, 4 You could get 1.99 financing on most 2024 Tundra Hybrid and Gas models, which could save you up to $4,400. Plus, get two years no-cost maintenance. Come in today. Toyota, let's go places. If you've been injured, call Joe. The law officers of Joe Bornstein. U.S. officials say Iran could launch its promised attack on Israel within the next 24 hours. The Islamic Republic is said to be positioning missiles and drones for a potential strike. 
Meanwhile, Israel is bracing for the assault and the U.S. has moved more firepower into the region. Fox's Jeff Paul is in Tel Aviv with the latest. It's a nearly daily occurrence along the Israel-Lebanon border. A barrage of drones launched at northern Israel with the Iron Dome intercepting most that pose a threat. The constant exchange of fire between Hezbollah and Israeli forces only adding to the growing tension in the Middle East. We are closely following what is happening also in Beirut, in Tehran, and in additional places. Facing pressure from major world powers, Iran's foreign ministry said on Tuesday that calls for restraint against Israel, quote, lack political logic and contradict principles of international law. What's reportedly now holding Tehran back, a potential ceasefire deal between Israel and Hamas. Now, I really can't speak for what Iran's endgame is, but I can tell you what ours is, and that is to prevent a wider regional war from spreading out within the Middle East. As Israeli forces continue to operate in and strike Gaza, talks are set to resume Thursday. Everyone in the region should understand that further attacks only perpetuate conflict, instability and insecurity for everyone. The U.S. is adding to its Navy assets in the region 14 warships plus one guided missile submarine equipped with over 150 Tomahawk cruise missiles in the anticipation of an attack this week. The bottom line is, you know, I'm not going to speculate or, or try to guess when they might attack um, other than to say we need to take it seriously. Uh, and we are doing that. And so we will be prepared uh, and are prepared. Tomorrow marks two weeks since Iran started threatening Israel with a major attack. And while there is a level of anxiety amongst folks here in Israel, they continue to go about their daily lives as the military stands at peak readiness. In Tel Aviv, Israel, Jeff Paul, Fox News. All right. Well, Ukraine continues its shocking advance into Russian territory, stunning Vladimir Putin and much of the world as it for as its forces push forward. Fox's Greg Palcott has more from London. The Ukrainian military is pushing deeper into Russian territory as a surprise new offensive enters its second week. Ukrainian troops are now more than 20 miles inside Russia, seizing dozens of settlements and almost 400 square miles. The first time Russia has lost territory to a foreign power since World War II. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky claims the offensive is just getting started, saying Russia brought the war to Ukraine and now it's coming home. It is only fair to destroy Russian terrorists where they are, where they launch their strikes from. Russia must be forced into peace if Putin wants to continue waging war so badly. And the Ukrainians could be getting more help from the U.S. A bipartisan group of American lawmakers met with Zelensky on Monday, promising to convince their colleagues to keep the weapons and ammunition flowing as Kyiv takes the fight to Moscow. You're fighting our fight, the independence and freedom of people around the world, including the United States. Two and a half years later, you're still standing and you're in Russia. <laughs> Remind me not to invade Ukraine. Russian President Vladimir Putin is vowing to push the Ukrainians back, but so far his forces haven't been able to do it. Now Russian officials are lashing out, saying the offensive wouldn't be possible without support from the West. It is essentially a military confrontation between Russia and the collective West. More than 120,000 Russian civilians have been evacuated in the past week, with another 60,000 set to leave in the coming days. In London, Greg Palka, Fox News. On a trip to New Orleans, President Biden announced a $150 million investment in cancer research. Fox's Connor Hansen has more. The president and first lady toured cancer research facilities at Tulane University in New Orleans. Experts walked them through cutting edge technology that maps out tumors and helps during complicated surgeries. We're on the verge, we're in the beginning, to fundamentally change how we deal with this dreaded disease. Biden has worked on the project since he was vice president and lost his son, Beau, to brain cancer. Folks, it's fair to say one of the most devastating words anyone can hear, and it's not hyperbole, is cancer. Tulane is one of a group of universities that will benefit from a $150 million influx of funding approved by the Biden-Harris administration. The cancer research program is meant to break down barriers between research institutions and encourage them to share their findings with each other. It's something the president says doesn't always happen. Too many docs walked by that mirror and looked in and saw a Nobel Prize about to be won. I'm not kidding. 
It really angered me. Scientists weren't sharing the results with other scientists. That's one of the first things we tried to do, is break down the silos. The announcement comes as the American Cancer Society projected a 93% increase in cancer deaths in men before the year 2050. Cancer is the second leading cause of death in the U.S. after heart disease. President Biden says the goal of his program is to cut cancer deaths in half in the next 25 years. In New York, Connor Hansen, Fox News. Well, still to come on Fox 22 News at 10, a new summer program is being introduced to young female students in Maine. And in sports, one Maine high school hoops coach recently set a Guinness World Record. We'll be right back. Alvin Kamara leads the Saints wow. against Brock Purdy and the 49ers. Touchdown! Preseason football, Sunday at 8 Eastern on Fox. You're all looking for something new. New? At U.S. Cellular, new and current customers can get the new Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 6 or Z Fold 6 on us. I usually just try out a new look, but that sounds lit. I heard their cameras have new Galaxy AI features. Have what? Galaxy AI. It's going to get one now. I'm fine. New and current customers get the new Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 6 or Z Fold 6 on us. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Whoa, is this your new Nissan Rogue? Yeah, crazy story. Yesterday, I was at the Nissan end of summer sales event taking a test drive, and Laura says, We've got somewhere to be. And off we went. We're having a blast. And she tells me it's recommended by Consumer Reports. These Rogues are going fast. I knew I had to have that Rogue. Get a low 279 per month lease on Rogue, or get up to 2,500 total savings on remaining select 2024 Rogue Platinum trims. Had enough of long lines, empty shelves, and overcrowded mega stores? Discover Parity Shop and Save in Brewer, your local culinary oasis in the North Brewer Shopping Center. Revel in fresh produce, pantry must-haves, organic delights, and Arista County's beloved products. All affordable and high quality. Can't find an item? We'll special order it. Shop with us today and feel the difference of our family-run, community-focused grocery experience. It is said that the eyes are the windows into the soul, which begs the question, can a window have a soul? At Renewal by Anderson, we think so. When it's a window forged from fibrex and over 100 years of refined craftsmanship, the essence of who we are transforms into a superior, stunningly beautiful window. So yes, a window can have a soul. For a limited time, take advantage of this great offer. Find out why we are the better way to a better window. Renewal by Anderson. Back by popular demand, the Lucerne Inn in Dedham presents its amazing Sunday brunch. Join us every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. for a culinary experience like no other. Indulge in an exquisite selection of dishes, all while enjoying breathtaking views. Seating is limited, so reservations are recommended, but walk-ins are always welcome. The Lucerne Inn Sunday Brunch, where great food meets a spectacular view. Call today to reserve your spot. Welcome back. Back to school season is picking up steam, but as students prepare for an academic year that is hopefully filled with learning and excitement, psychology experts say if your child is the target of bullying, it can dramatically affect their mental and physical well-being. Fox's Kevin Cork takes a closer look at how you can help prevent harm. Are you guys excited about going back to school? Yes. No. <laughs> While the opinions are mixed, one thing is certain. Back to school season is ramping up. Pencils, markers, crayons. But while folks are busy checking off items on their child's supply list, educators say parents should also be checking on their kids' mental health, especially focusing on the impacts of bullying and how to prevent it. It can be relational, it can be verbal, it can be physical, and verbal is the most common type. But over the last 15 years, we've also seen electronic or cyberbullying emerge. Robin Kowalski, psychology professor at Clemson University, says bullying typically starts early on. The highest prevalence rates of bullying victimization are actually in elementary school. She also says some common characteristics of a bully include they feel it's okay to use force to get what they want. They often feel like the rules don't apply to them. 
while parents should be looking out for warning signs that their child is a victim, including marks on their body or them withdrawing from school activities and their phone, Kowalski cites a new phenomenon called psychological mattering as a means of making students feel less alone and like they have to pick on others to feel important. Students need to be made to feel like they matter, that they are important or significant to other people. Meanwhile, the CDC says bullying can increase a person's risk of depression and anxiety, and it can even lower a student's academic performance. I'm Kevin Cork, Fox News. Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands are bracing for possible flash flooding from Tropical Storm Ernesto. Forecasters warn the storm could cause heavy damage to the region. Fox Weather's Nicole Valdez has more. Tropical Storm Ernesto continues gaining strength in the Caribbean. Forecasters predicting the storm will reach hurricane strength in the next 24 hours. Several islands now on hurricane watch, including Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. The biggest thing that concerns us about this system first is the large amount of rain that may be falling in between two to three days. We're talking between six to eight inches. Concerns over flooding and blackouts led officials to activate the National Guard in Puerto Rico. The start of classes also canceled in public schools and more than 300 shelters were open to help anyone impacted by the storm. It is a given fact that 50 mile per hour winds are going to cause a high level of disruption in certain areas. Authorities now urging residents across the region to be on guard. Heavy rains could trigger landslides and flash flooding. A potentially life threatening storm surge is also expected. In St. Thomas, one charter boat company says they've already begun bracing for the storm early. So we spent, you know, the last 24 hours kind of getting ready, preparing all the boats. Um, so now what I do basically is I'll, I'll check on them um, throughout the day today, um, you know, this evening and then tomorrow morning as well. And we're expecting to start to feel the impacts of Ernesto here in Puerto Rico and on the U.S. Virgin Islands late Tuesday into early Wednesday. In San Juan, Puerto Rico, I'm Nicole Valdez, Fox Weather. All right, so busy storm season so far, and it's probably not getting any less busy as it rolls on. Absolutely, and of course, we're keeping an our eye, our eye on all the storms because they could have implications along the East Coast uh, here in the U.S. and all the way up here in Maine, as we Absolutely. know. Absolutely. All right, stay tuned. Our full forecast is coming up next. All right, we've had some isolated showers and thunderstorms throughout the week, and that's going to continue on these next few days. Who is going to stay dry and who is going to get wet? I'll have the answers coming right up. Protect your vehicle from rusting away with Bell's Automotive Protection. We are the leader in mobile undercoating and rust proofing in Maine. We'll travel right to your driveway using the best and safest products on the market. This is much safer than rubberized coatings that can cause damage later on. We spray all types of vehicles, including commercial fleets. We all know vehicles aren't cheap anymore. Don't let the harsh winter chemicals eat them away. Call us or visit our page for a free quote. 207-659-3805. Tired of your internet service constantly letting you down? Those other providers may promise the world with their flashy advertisements, but are you truly having a good customer experience? Fear not, because there's a new player in town. Introducing GoNet Speed. No more endless hold times or automated responses. We're here to listen, support, and provide you with the exceptional service you deserve. Our fast, reliable fiber internet, it's mind blowing. Let us show you what true internet satisfaction feels like. Make this a summer to share in the three-row Kia Sorento, the Tech Forward Sportage, the available all-wheel drive Seltos, or the IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus Telluride, each one recommended by Consumer Reports. This summer, visit your local Kia dealer. Get 0.9% APR for up to 48 months on the purchase of select new 2024 Sportage and 2024 Sorento models. Your favorite restaurants were half off. It's half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. Go to foxbangor.com, click on half off dining, and start saving now. Lakeshore Restaurant, 16 Crockett Road, Dexter, has a menu with a wide selection of fried seafood, lobster, burgers, sandwiches, pizza, and more. Try our ice cream or a milkshake. Dine inside or go to our takeout window and sit outside and enjoy the view. Open every day. 
Great restaurants from all over Eastern Maine at Half Off Dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. These are the best ocean rescue teams on planet Earth. You want to be a lifeguard? This is the real deal. Thank you. Our main weather is brought to you by Washington County Community College. Check out the new probations and correction online program. Don't miss out on free college. All right, taking a look at those highs out there for today, we can see Bangor at 82 degrees. And if you look down south, a little bit uh, cooler as well. Bar Harbor at 79 and Rockland at 78. But still to the southwestern portion of the state, lots of low 80s out there today. Augusta at 81. And if you look a little bit to the northwest, Greenville was a little bit cooler in those mid-70s at 76 degrees. As we take a look at those uh, overnight lows, we'll see we, are, uh, we will be just below 60 degrees in Bangor at 59 degrees. Lots of those cooler temperatures are going to stay to the north. Clayton Lake at 50 degrees and some areas over here to the northwest and north of us will be in those mid 50s for tonight. Look down south, Deer Eye will be a little bit warmer at 62. Continuing on into tomorrow, we'll be back in those low 80s for tomorrow, but you can see some areas will not be able to get to those 80s because they will have some showers in the area, especially west and northwest of Bangor, so they will be a little bit cooler. And then also by the coast, we will see cool temperatures right around the low 70s as well. As we take a look at that temperature trend, looks like we got some nice temperatures throughout the whole week. They're going to be all around those mid to upper 70s. As we can see, we do get close to 80 uh, going into tomorrow and for Friday. But then as we go into the rest of the week, starting off the weekend, we'll have a high of 77 on Saturday and back near those mid 70s Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. So very comfortable temperatures throughout the rest of this week. All right, taking a look at the radar from afar. We just have a few disturbances north of the state and they're making their way in. We can see some isolated storms off to the northwest of Bangor, but those should diminish by tonight. Nothing too much to worry about there. Let's take a look at those future rainfall chances, though. Looks like by Wednesday afternoon into the evening hours, we'll have our best chances for rain. We'll have a few isolated showers and thunderstorms, and those will diminish by uh, going into Wednesday night. Thursday, though, once we get back into the afternoon, there is another chance for a few more isolated showers and thunderstorms. So let's take a look at that future cast out there right now. For right now, we can see there's maybe a few stray showers that may pass through tonight. Nothing to worry about, but once we get into right around the afternoon hours, 2 o'clock tomorrow, especially west of Bangor, lots of isolated showers and storms will be traveling north to south and that will continue on throughout the day going into overnight hours as well lots of cloud cover and then once we get into thursday that's when we see a nice thunderstorm that may develop to the west of bangor as well a little bit bigger in size so we'll have lots of more rainfall with it as well all right going into tonight's forecast low of 58 degrees mostly clear skies for tonight we'll have some fog early morning tomorrow right around 5 a.m on that northwest winds around five miles per hour as we go into to tomorrow high of 79 degrees and we should have some increasing clouds and some thunderstorms as well especially to the west of Bangor winds northeast 5 to 10 miles per hour taking a look at that extended forecast we got some storms the next few days that may keep those highs uh, below 80 degrees but then once we get into Friday and Saturday conditions improve with partly cloudy skies all right, well, so we'll be bracing for those storms the next couple of days. Yeah, and we're seeing those, the highs actually come down a little bit, too. We've mm -hmm. been seeing mostly 80s and stuff, a lot of 70s in that one. Yeah, yeah, I'm not complaining. All right. All right, well, sports is coming right up next. Stay with us for that. AMHG Works LLC, American Made Home Goods, located at the Rennies Plaza in Bangor. Come check us out. We're open seven days a week featuring artisans, crafters, and manufacturers from across the United States, where everything is meticulously designed with care and pride. We also have a wide selection of pet accessories and treats. Let us be your new favorite store. We look forward to seeing you. Extend summer fun at Toyota's national sales event with a new Camry, RAV4 Hybrid, Highlander, BZ4X, Tundra, Corolla Hybrid, Tacoma. You could get 1.99% financing on most Tundra hybrid and gas models. Toyota, let's go places. Let's play Bob's Dare to Compare. Sam and Chris are hunting for the perfect small space sofa. Both have pop-up sleepers and hidden storage, but my play day has USB ports, built-in shelving, and a drop-down table with cup holders. Theirs is over $2,000, but how much is mine? Spin that wheel, Chris. All those features and my play day is still just $7.99. See how much you can save when you dare to compare in store or at mybobs.com. Central Maine Barns and Sheds, quality products built right here in Newport with a strong attention to detail. 
We have an incredible selection of pre-made options and would be more than happy to custom build a unit specifically for you. Central Maine Barns and Sheds has financing options available, including a rent-to-own program. We provide free delivery and setup within a 30-mile radius of any of our locations. Check out our full inventory at centralmainbarns.com or call for more information, 368-6177. Yo. These dudes are getting three grand a month. No strings attached. Hell yeah. So what are they gonna do? Let's go! Learn to fly, buy a monkey. That's a dream pet right there. <gasps> Universal Basic Guys, September 8th on Fox. Tonight Sports is brought to you by Diversified Ink Tattoo Studio in Bangor, located in the Penobscot Plaza, providing custom ink by licensed artists for more than 20 years. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. Starting with some basketball over in Naples, former Mr. Main basketball and current Lake Region coach Ryan Martin is now the new owner of a Guinness World Record. Our Jack Webb reports. It was, a, it was honestly just a really fun event, and I'm very thankful for everyone who came. On August 9th, Lake Region boys basketball head coach Ryan Martin set a new world record, 1,134 three-pointers in an hour. When we got the chance to talk with Ryan, we were curious. How do you even think of such a thing? My friend Nick in May, it was a couple months ago, probably like in the end of May, we were just shooting around and just really just messing around in the gym. And I made 104 threes in a row, which was, from what I know, the most I've ever made in a row. And then he's the one who said, you should start going for some shooting world records. But you don't just walk into a gym and break a world record. I kind of looked into it as training for a marathon two and a half weeks before a marathon and you don't want to run a full marathon before and then right in the two weeks leading up to it. So I know it talks about running like eight to nine miles, 10 miles. So I did a lot. I did a couple 20 minute sessions and I did a couple five minute sessions. After cramping up the first time, he realized he needed to strategize on and off the court. Nick and I made a chart of how we kind of wanted myself to, from how I wanted to pace myself through the entire hour. But I had a, an avocado, so some healthy fast before and then some liquid IV. And um, I said some like salt tablets too right before it. Once you get all that taken care of, it looks a little something like this. As you can imagine, shooting threes nonstop for an hour isn't an easy task. I mean, 15, 20 minutes in, I'm looking at the scoreboard and I see there's still 40 something minutes left and my body's shot already. So that's when it's, yeah, that's when it becomes a battle with yourself. And it's really just taking it one shot at a time and having confidence in yourself and knowing that you prepared to do it. After all that, Dr. Buckets is thinking about what's next. So I'm trying to continue to break as many world records shooting as I can. I want to do a lot of shooting clinics, maybe go around the state, go around New England and do some shooting clinics. Reporting from Bangor, Jack Webb, ABC7, Fox 22 Sports. Thanks for that, Jack. Going to the football field now, Maine football is just over two weeks away from suiting up for the first time at Alphonse Stadium for their 2024 season opener. On Tuesday evening, the Black Bears completing their second full scrimmage of the season. Maine has a few key returners on both sides, but a lot of new pieces and a lot of new guys in new roles this year than in previous years. They also have a slew of new coaches on the sidelines and in the booth, so there's been a lot of kinks to work out this offseason. Here's what head coach Jordan Stevens had to say on the team's development as they get ready to turn the page from training camp to game prep. Yeah, I thought tonight was a step forward in, uh, you know, just training camp, and it was good to get out here, play a little more situation. We did an overtime situation. We were able to um, get a backed up situation as well, and um, you know, just see some more drives put together. I think nothing can really be simulated uh, in practice like that. So when we have officials here and we're able to coordinate it that way, that always helps our players. So. Staying with football, the Patriots holding their only joint practice of the preseason and their last practice open to the public on Tuesday morning. New England welcoming in the Philadelphia Eagles to Foxborough for a joint practice ahead of their preseason game on Thursday evening. Philly is expected to contend for an NFC championship, so the expectations for them are much different than the ones for the Pats. It was a big evaluation day for a lot of guys, too, including quarterback Drake May. Nice throw from him there. He had a good start to practice, but then had a rough time running the two-minute drill, taking two sacks in four plays. Here's what he had to say on learning from that experience. 
Yeah, I think, um, you know, first of all, I got to get the ball out early early downs. So you can't take sacks in two minutes. Um, you know, whether, whether I'm feeling something, whether it's from the backside or whatever, I um, got to get the ball out. And then other than that, just try to find completions, whether it's hitting the back, um, trying to do something, you know, trying to get us moving. Other than that, like some great great reps, great reps to learn from. Um, you know, a great defense, you know, they do a good job. And uh, just some big dudes up front and some different looks. So it's a, just a great learning experience. All right, let's go to the baseball diamond now. The Boston Red Sox looking to make it two wins in a row against the Rangers on Tuesday night. A beautiful night for a ball game down at Fenway Park. Red Sox starting hot in this one. Raphael Devers is at the plate here with Masa Yoshida on. Devers smacks one off the monster and left two outs, so Yoshida's running off the bat, and Masa is just going to beat the throw home here. He scores all the way from first. Red Sox up one to nothing. Three nothing now, two runners on for Connor Wong and Wong unloads on this one into the monster seats and left. Sox up big, six to nothing. Next inning, Cam Boozer running into a little trouble out of the pen, faces three batters, walks two, and gives up a hit. Sox lead now cut to six to four, but the bats would pick it back up. Bases loaded in the eighth. Nick Sogard at the dish. He puts one into right field. Two runs are going to come home and score there. Willie Abreu safe at home. Sox go on to win nine to four. And that is all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. For too long, veterans across Maine had to travel hundreds of miles to get the medical care they needed. So in Congress, Marine veteran Jared Golden changed that, working to build a new hospital here so veterans can get mental health and substance abuse treatment closer to home. Now Golden's working to help more veterans get the care they deserve and protect the Social Security and Medicare benefits you've earned. Tell Jared Golden to keep putting Mainers first. Extend summer fun at Toyota's national sales event with a new Camry, RAV4 Hybrid, Highlander, BZ4X Tundra, Corolla Hybrid, Tacoma. You could get 1.99% financing on most Tundra hybrid and gas models. Toyota, let's go places. Fires, floods, burst pipes. Disasters happen, but the mess they leave behind doesn't have to last. For 40 years, Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration has been there to help Mainers get back to the closest to normal as they can. When your property is at its worst, Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration is at their best, and they have been for four decades. Put your trust in the Bouchard team. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. You keep the memories, we'll handle the rest. I was hurt in a bad motorcycle accident. I tried to handle it on my own, but I could tell quickly I was in way over my head. The other driver's insurance company was very difficult to work with. That's why I decided to call Joe. Smartest move I ever made. I went from being completely overwhelmed with doctor's appointments and medical bills to feeling normal again. Joe Bornstein's office took care of everything. I was completely satisfied with the outcome. I'd wish I'd called sooner. Call Joe today for a free case evaluation. There's never a fee unless you win. Your favorite restaurants were half off. It's half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC7. Go to foxbangor.com, click on half off dining and start saving now. Brackish River Bistro, sharing the Winterport Winery and Blavscott Bay Brewery building. We have an incredible breakfast menu, brunch specials, plus we're open nightly for dinner and drinks. Take the drive to Winterport and taste what the Brackish River Bistro is all about. Great restaurants from all over Eastern Maine at Half Off Dining from Fox 22 and ABC7. This fall, Accused returns with an all-new season, and you can stream season one anytime. It's the show critics call... Unbelievable. Accused. All new season October 1st on Fox and stream season one on Hulu. Before the epic return this fall, stream previous seasons now. This isn't the end. This is just the opening act. 911 Lone Star season premiere this fall and stream anytime on Hulu. A new summer program is aiming to introduce young female students to Maine's construction industry. Our Grace Blanchard shares more. The Girls Build the Future camp is introducing the next generation of females to the construction industry. I don't see it like only a boy job. I see it like maybe a boy and girl job. Yeah. Yeah. The pilot program is sponsored by the Maine Department of Community and Economic Development. The department's commissioner says these efforts are vital as women currently make up only 15% of Maine's construction industry. You know, I think it's really important that we think about getting young women into the construction trades, right? There are great opportunities for them here, and I think they're seeing that today. 
The camp aims to give girls in middle school a look inside the industry while challenging them with hands-on learning. Yesterday we made something that didn't turn out as we wanted it to be, but then we learned from yesterday and built no, this. Today this works really, really well. Yeah. yeah. The camp was launched this year by the Maine Discovery Museum in partnership with the construction company Sargent. Young girls should know, number one, that they can do anything. Uh, number two, they can do anything they want here in Maine. The Discovery Museum's executive director hopes to take this program all across the state. So if they want to uh, do construction engineering, they can do it here. If they want to just support people who do construction engineering and want to do design work, they can do it here. There is nothing that they can't do that cannot be done in Maine. In Orno, Grace Blanchard, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. And finally tonight, a woman in Clifton is helping out her local food bank by walking for wheels. Selena Lufkin is walking every day in August and posting about it on Facebook in an effort to raise funds for the Clifton Community Food Bank's box truck, which is in need of repairs. Our Jody Hersey went on a stroll with her to learn more. Selena Lufkin is on a mission. As the owner of the Parks Pond Campground in Clifton, Lovkin wakes early each day to take a stroll in order to raise awareness and funds for the Clifton Community Food Bank and its box truck that's in need of repairs. So I woke up one morning and thought, why don't we walk? Why don't we walk for wheels? That'd be so cool. It'd give people incentive to walk. You put a buck every time you walk in an envelope and at the end of the month you turn it in and maybe we'll get a wheel. Lovekin started posting about her walk for wheels on Facebook on August 1st and has continued to do so on a daily basis. You know, anything you can get is better than zero. And I just feel like it's a win-win. The Clifton Food Bank, which is located in the basement of the Clifton Baptist Church, is open twice a month, supplying families with meat, produce, and canned goods. Ruth Perry is the pantry's treasurer. We're reaching out to the communities for a financial donation towards the truck so that we don't have to use any of the money that we have for food. Perry says the truck is currently at the mechanic shop where it is in need of $4,500 worth of repairs to replace the brakes and the tires. She's just grateful to have Lufkin support. Selena is not the only one that can do that. If there are any other organizations that would like to support us, we would love to first have them contact us and then by all means implement it. Even if it only garters $20, $30, we'd, we'd love to have it. In Clifton, I'm Jody Hersey for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. You just love to see an individual effort like that and yeah. someone stepping up to just do their part and, and help their community and hopefully it inspires a lot more. I feel like that's always an ongoing theme in our communities. You know, you had the young lady yesterday who, you know, collected all of those backpacks. It was yeah. like 500 backpacks yeah. and wants to beat the record next year. And, you know, I feel like time and time again, we see Mainers step up to help Mainers. Um, doing it quite literally in that case <laughs> yep. and so it's always wonderful to see and you know we hope we just always hope that they crush their goals and that agents organizations get what they need yes we do yeah all right well, let's do it for us tonight everyone thanks for watching good night for more local news coverage switch over to our sister station abc7 right now for abc7 news at 11. hot sweaty
that's my verdict. Goldblum guest host Jimmy Kimmel Live with John Cena, Omar C, and music from Jeff Goldblum and the Mildred Snitzer Orchestra featuring Haley Rock. This is ABC 7 News at 11.